March 23rd, 2.35pm, District Court, courtroom number 3. Court will now reconvene. I assume both sides are ready? Y yes Your Honour. Y yes Your Honour. I can understand the defence acting like this. However, why do you also seem distraught, Mr Edgeworth? I... that is... It's nothing, Your Honour. What's wrong with Edgeworth? It looks like something unexpected just happened to him. Now then, Mr Edgeworth, if you could please tell the court the results of the handwriting analysis on Ms Impax's suicide note. Y yes Your Honour. Unfortunately, we have discovered that this suicide note is a forgery. What? What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This. This note was not written by Miss Inpax herself. It is a fake. I mean, handwriting analysis is basically astrology, so... You can't really rely on it, but alright. <laughs> order, order, order! Mr. Edgeworth, would you care to explain what is going on? If this was not written by Miss Inpax, then who wrote it? We would need more time to do a more detailed analysis, however, it appears that the handwriting matches that of the victim, Mr. Juan Corridor. M Mr. C Corridor? Well, well. It looks like Miss Impax never left a suicide note after all. I mean, maybe she did, and then Mr. Corridor made one that had different information on it. You know, it's entirely possible. She never wrote anything about On Guard. However, Your Honor, even though the suicide note is indeed a fake, Mr. Ongard could not have known that, and so that facts... And so that... And so, and so that facts remain unchanged? What? I think that that shouldn't be there, and so facts remain unchanged. That makes more sense, right? Hmm. Acting under the assumption that it was real, he had plotted to possess it. Hmm. That does sound very plausible. This theory that Ongard had no idea that the suicide note was fake... Something seems a little wrong with it. The defense believes that the theory the prosecution has stated contradicts testimony. If everything the prosecution has proven up to this point is true, then it's impossible for Mr. Ongard to not have known it was a fake. He had this camera, right? So he would have known exactly what Mr. Corridor was up to, including forging a suicide note. What is this little item called again? Uh, a video camera, Your Honor. Well, a very small one, but... Oh, that's right, a camera. <laughs> you kids and your fancy toys nowadays. Mr. Edgeworth, earlier you claimed that Mr. Ongard knew of the existence of this note, because he was spying on the victim. Isn't that right? If that were true, then this means Mr. Ongard would have known that the victim had forged the note. Ack! So then the defendant knew the suicide note was a fake. And if that's true, then the situation has suddenly changed in a very dramatic way. Exactly, Your Honour. The prosecution's theory as to what Mr. Ongard's motive for murder was, it has suddenly disappeared into thin air. But, Your Honour, it's not as if Mr. Ongard monitored Mr. Corridor 24 hours a day. Perhaps the victim wrote the note in a place Mr. Ongard didn't know of. Well, right back at you, Mr. Edgeworth. Why don't you show us some proof that the victim made the forgery at an unknown place? <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't be very difficult for Mr. Corridor to have forged the note at home or something like that, and then brought it to the hotel. They haven't been at the hotel that long, right? <laughs> oh my god. Come to think of it, why, why were they staying in a hotel when, like, Mr. Ongard lives very close to the hotel? Why did they need a room at the hotel? At all. Huh. Order, order, order. Mr. Edgeworth, it looks like this time it is you who has dug his own grave. As I figured. Huh? As you figured? As I figured, it came down to this after all. Mr. Edgeworth, you were not making any sense. When I heard the results of the handwriting analysis, I thought this might happen. The question is, what next? What next? If the prosecution can't prove Mr. Ongard's motive through the evidence, then we must prove it from another angle. 
Well, I agree with you there. Your Honour, prosecution would like to call a witness to the stand at this time. Oh, well that's fine. However, this witness, this witness is a little unusual. Edward stuttering? Was that stuttering? Oops. Um, stutter, stutter. <laughs> this is not like him at all. Unusual. Well, what sort of witness is this person, Mr. Edgeworth? This witness is one who is perfectly fit to answer once and for all the question of Who was it that hired Shelley to kill her to commit murder? That's impossible. Who in the... No such person exists who can answer that question with such certainty. I yes, Mr. Edgeworth, who is this witness? It is... it's... um... Yes, go on, who is it? The man himself, Mr. Shelley DeKiller. Oh, Mr. DeKiller. Wait, Shelley DeKiller? <laughs> um, you mean the killer? Uh, I mean the assassin? Yes, Your Honor. He's coming here to the witness stand? Well, yes, in a manner of speaking. I recognize that this is a very unusual circumstance, so I ask for your permission. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright? Y yes? Is this alright with you? Do I have a choice here? I can't really do much else to drag this trial out. The defense has no objections, Your Honor. I wonder if it really is alright to do this. Very well then. The prosecution calls its witness to the stand. Edgeworth, is there no other way left to us? Now then, witness. Um, your name and your, uh, occupation, please. Very good, sir. My name is Shelley DeKiller, and I am a professional assassin. I- I say! What is going on here? Your Honor, how can you remain so calm, and what is the meaning of this two-way radio? Actually, Your Honor, it was delivered to me just now, and it came with a condition. As long as we do not trace its source, Mr. DeKiller will testify to this court. So this must be what that urgent phone call he got earlier was about. Oh no, this will not do. I cannot allow this in my courtroom. In my court, sorry. First of all, we can't even be sure this is really Mr. DeKiller himself. Witness, please present some sort of proof that you are in fact Shelley DeKiller. I understand. Please wait a second. I'm... So... hungry... M Maya! Maya! A, a voice! Mr. Wright, can you confirm anything from this? The defense has no objections to this person. We are satisfied that this man is indeed Shelley DeKiller. Looks like we have run into yet another unexpected turn of events. Well, it doesn't seem like we have too many choices under these circumstances, so... Now then, witness. There is one thing I would like to confirm before we speak of anything else. And what would that be? At the request of a client, you killed Mr. Juan Corridor. Is this correct? It is as you say. I did indeed kill Mr. Corridor. Oh. Now that we have answered that, let's move on to the name of your client. Very well. This is all just a bad dream. <laughs> yes, that's it, a bad dream. Shelley the Killer. What is he gonna say? About my client. There is something I must first state. To an assassin, nothing is more important than the trust between a client and himself. And that is the reason I am here today on this witness stand. It is my wish that you grasp this concept before I give the name of my client. Hmm. Mr. DeKilla seems to be a very clever man. I'd almost say he seems to be mocking us. While he may appear to be our enemy, Your Honor, Mr. DeKiller is only stating the truth. He is no hypocrite. He has always stood by this one belief. You mean about this trust between his clients and himself thing? Hmm. It seems to be a level of trust beyond what people like me can comprehend. Well, Mr. Wright, are you ready to cross-examine the witness? Yes, Your Honor. There's no way to know what's coming next, so stay cool and collected, Phoenix. About my client. Okay, so there's no contradiction here, we just want to press everything so we get as much info as possible. 
Um, and then uh, Shirley will actually tell us the name of his client. We can hear anything you have to say later. Can you please just tell us your clients? I don't think you understand your place, Mr. Attorney. I said this is something I must first state. Do you know what the word first means? Sorry. Go on. Well, it appears this is one witness you can't badger, Mr. Wright. It's only because you don't know about Maya's situation. Press. The trust between you and your client? I provide my services in a fast and efficient manner. In exchange, I trust that my clients are discreet about me and my identity. If too many people knew my face, it would be quite troublesome. And that is why you're testifying in this manner? This is the first time one of my clients has ever been accused of murder. I must preserve the Jaquilla name so my clients can trust me. But couldn't someone stab you in the back and break your trust? It has never happened before, but if it ever did... Yes? That person wouldn't be my client for very long. They would certainly... That's enough. Please, no more. Very well. It was only a hypothetical anyway. That seems a little strange to me. I mean, you were about to tell us the name of your client. I would think that this would be very bad for them. It doesn't matter to me. This client has already broken the rules and acted outside of their prescribed role. Their role? This person tried to implicate another of the crime in order to save themselves. And this is a trespass that cannot be forgiven. You... Who gave you the right to be so high and mighty? Is the gentleman who spoke just now? Excuse me, but would you care to die? Ah, uh, no, no, I, I didn't say anything. The judge had better watch himself. We understand, so please tell us the name of your client. I'm afraid I cannot do that. I still have a few things to say before I do. Ugh, that egomaniacal. It's not good for your health to be so aggravated. You won't live very long if you let everything bother you. Somehow, that coming from an assassin makes it less than comforting. I don't really care about all this extra fluff, just tell us the name already. Patience, try to calm down a little. It's important to try and understand his mindset. He seems very steadfast and closed, so you're gonna have to work to get him to talk. I'm not his therapist, you know. I need to press this one again. The trust between you and your client. Provide my services in a fast and efficient manner. In exchange, I trust that my clients are discreet about me and my identity. These are the role and duties an assassin and his client are to carry out. I'm sorry, but I was wondering about something you just said. You said that your client had already broken the rules? A person who frames another is the worst kind of human. And that's why you feel you can betray this person. I have no trust relation with a client who can't understand their assigned role. Just my luck, an assassin with a conscience. Who would have figured? Now then, everyone, do you think you can understand my logic? This case just keeps getting better and better. If you can't, then I'm afraid we can't proceed. Everyone understands your point, I think. Really. In that case... I believe I am prepared to disclose the information you seek. You have made it crystal clear that you value trust over all else. I believe we are ready. Excellent. And that is the reason I am here to demonstrate your stands. Now then, I do believe it's about time I revealed the name of my client. Don't you agree? What is it? Hmm, now I can't bring myself to ask the client's name. If you can't ask it, Mr. Wright, then I will. Witness. What is the name of your client who requested the murder of Mr. Juan Corridor? That person's name is... Adrian Andrews. What? W witness. That's not who you told me it was earlier. Pray tell, 
What are you talking about, Mr. Prosecutor? I should think I know my own client, and it is Adrian Andrews. What? I know, right? <laughs> this can't be on the phone earlier. What's going on here? My guess is that Mr. Killer just stabbed Mr. Edgeworth in the back. Stabbed Edgeworth in the back? I'm sure in order to get an audience with this court, Mr. DeKiller told him a different name. Madongard, perhaps? I knew it. This... this is outrageous. I was deceived. This witness is telling a very serious lie. But you were the one who summoned this witness. Gurk. Grr. You, you, Shelley DeKiller. My testimony is the truth. The defendant at the moment is Matt Ongard, am I correct? All I wish to do is help procure his acquittal. Hmm. Wow. All of a sudden, it feels like he can actually win this. Yeah. Prosecution has failed to provide a motive and has instead provided this suicide note, which is a forgery created by the victim. Furthermore, there is a possibility the defendant himself knew it was a fake. But most definitive of all, we have heard from the assassin himself the name of his client. Mr. DeKiller's client who requested the murder was not the defendant at all. No. With all this evidence, it's obvious to me that this means that Mr. Matt Ongard is innocent. <gasps> I seem to have caused you all a bit of confusion. Please, continue your discussion and call me when you've reached a verdict. Beep. Bailiff, please bring Miss Adrian Andrews in immediately. What now? But the way this is going, Ongar will be found innocent. This may be our last chance to save Maya. Yeah, but... But Edgeworth is right. The killer is lying. And Ongar, my client, I know he's guilty. Maybe don't talk about that in the courtroom in front of everyone. I mean... They're gonna hear you. <laughs> Can I live with myself if I win this? Who would have believed that the prosecution's own witness would absolve the defendant? Your Honor, the prosecution requests permission to further question the witness. Shelley DeKiller is certainly lying under oath. Hmm. It wasn't me. Listen, everyone, please. That testimony just now, it was all one big lie. Miss Andrews, the suicide note may have been a fake. But, that man, Matt, he's the reason Celeste died. And Juan's death, it was all because he got pulled into Matt's twisted world. That testimony just now, you have to believe me, it was a horrible, horrible lie. But Mr. DeKiller himself has testified. He has named you as his client. No, that's not true. Also, there is quite a bit of evidence that points to you. The knife and button, donning the nickel samurai costume. But that's... that's... We even have a motive. We know that Miss Celeste's impact was a large part of your life. Mm, she sure was. So sad. You wanted to follow her, and you wanted revenge against the two who hurt her. I would say you have plenty of reasons to want them both dead. I... no. Mr. Wright. You... You know the truth. Tell them. Tell them the real story. Who the real killer is. Tell them. Please. Help me. Yes, I know the truth. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor? I believe we have reached the end of this trial. Therefore, I ask the defense for any final words or opinions. I have to decide. Do I take the not guilty verdict and save Maya? Or do I throw this chance away and wait for Gumshoe's new evidence? What am I supposed to do? <sighs> Phoenix. I can't do it, Mia. I can't accept a not guilty. You're a lawyer. I know. But... But Matt Ongard is a killer. A murderer. I can't... I can't let him get away with this. I can't let someone else take the fall. I let Miss Andrews be convicted, and I am no better than on guard. And even though I don't want to admit it, I have to face the fact that it is because of Edgeworth that I now know the real truth. He could have gotten on guard convicted so many times over, 
but he never took a single one of those chances. If I take this verdict right now, I'd be betraying his trust. His trust? I never thought about it until now. I... I trust him? Yes, you do. Mr. Wright, your opinion, please. The defense requests that we be allowed to further question Mr. DeKiller. Uh, am I hearing you correctly, Mr. Wright? Right. But, but, that witness has cleared your client through his testimony. Your job here is done. I'm not done yet. To see through witnesses' lies and find the truth. That is my job, Your Honor. There's still more evidence to look at. And I'm sure that once those pieces arrive here in this very courtroom, a miracle will occur. Very well, the trial will continue. Mr. Edgeworth, please re-establish connection with Mr. DeKiller. Right away, Your Honor. Do -do 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 -do. Has a verdict been reached? Before that, we would like to talk with you a little more. About? All you needed from me was the name of my client. What else could you need me for? Well, actually, we would like to hear everything you know about this case. That is how things are usually done. Oh, sorry. That is how things are usually done. What is he talking about? Usually done? But what shall we have him testify about now? Mr. DeKiller, if you don't mind, please testify about your client in more detail. You legal people and your procedures. Is it any wonder no one likes going to court? Likes to go to court? About my client, part two. As I have already stated quite a few times, Adrian Andrews is my client. However, one thing I simply cannot overlook is tampering with the scene of the crime. My client did it to frame another for the crime, while pretending to be the first person to discover the body and enter the scene. Adrian Andrews already knew from the very beginning that Juan Corridor was dead. But even more appalling is the creation and planting of the knife and button. That act is what I was referring to when I said my client had broken the rules. Hmm. This is a most unexpected turn of events. For the... Uh, fifth time now? However, this time everything has finally been revealed. Just a second, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Edgeworth? We still have the cross-examination to do. But you don't need to question testimony like this. Do you, Mr. Wright? Your Honor, the defense will question the witness. <laughs> As if I have a choice here. Huh? Why? What this witness has said is nothing but beneficial to the defense's case. If you scrutinize the testimony, then... Then I'll expose the lies in that oh-so-beneficial testimony, I suppose. I don't understand what's going on anymore. That makes two of us. About my client part two. Okay, so... Here's the thing. If Adrian knew from the very beginning that Juan Corridor was dead, then what's with this wine glass, right? Hang on. I'll pretend- no, 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 that doesn't really make sense. Hang on. I know there's a contradiction here, but I forget exactly what it is. Like, the wine glass has the fingerprints on it because, you know, she didn't know that he was dead yet. I mean, she, she, for real, but she could easily have faked that if she didn't already know. I think I need to start pressing to figure out what's going on. So you're saying most clients wouldn't do such a thing? That is correct. Usually, most people try to create an alibi for themselves. If you should use my services, Mr. Attorney, I would suggest you plan for your alibi too. Uh, no, I already told you, I have no intention of using your services, ever. Why does he keep looking at me like I'm the one on trial here? From the very beginning? That is correct, from before my client visited the room. All of my clients know precisely what the situation is at all times. I wonder if that's really true. That's odd. 
think I can present the wine glass to this spot. I'm just gonna hit, throw down a save so I don't die if anything bad happens. Oh, uh, there we go. Uh, I think I need to present the wine glass just here. Interesting that they put tomato juice in the glass, like, because you can't have alcohol in this game, but they still call it a wine glass. It's interesting. Objection! Yeah, it is the wine glass. Oh, music stopped. Thank you so much for taking the time to testify, Mr. DeKiller. What is the meaning of that attitude? When Adrian Andrews entered the victim's room, your client had no idea that Juan Corridor had been murdered. But how... How do you know that? From this wine glass, Your Honor. The glass? Mr. DeKiller's supposed client thought Mr. Corridor had only painted. Which is why this glass of tomato juice was poured for the victim. Hmm. But isn't that just a part of Adrian Andrews' calculated plan? That is not possible, Your Honor. This glass bears the fingerprints of that person. Yeah, you might notice that everyone's talking in a really stilted way to avoid saying that Adrian is female. Like, they're not using any pronouns, that sort of thing. Yeah. I assume this works better in the original Japanese, because Japanese doesn't really have gendered pronouns, whereas English does. So, this translation is a little, it's a little clunky. <laughs> Had this been planned, they would never have left their fingerprints behind. And you can see, like, now he's using they, them, even though Adrian doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> I see your point. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion? Strangely enough, I had the same exact thought just now. Witness, how do you explain this strange phenomenon? I... isn't it a waste of time to ask about such a minor detail? It's not a very important point anyway, correct? I'm afraid you were mistaken. If Adrian Andrews really is your client, as you claim, then your client should have, should have had knowledge of Mr. Corridor's death. If not, then that can only mean that Adrian Andrews was never your client at all. Yeah, it's, it's really, really, really stilted. <laughs> How strange. Yes? Why is it that the attorney has yet to raise an objection at this absurd situation? Phoenix, if the killer figures out what we're up to, we're in real trouble. Yeah, I know. Mr. Edgeworth, I'm surprised. You know you can't say things like that without any evidence. Ah, sorry. Well, that was an awfully weak objection for the two of you. Anyway, I am positive there was a contradiction in that testimony. The prosecution requests further testimony concerning when the request was taken. Very well. Right now, I have to buy us more time. While we wait for the items to kill left behind to get here, I just know that the very outcome of this trial lies with those items. It does, we need those items. Request taking. This request came to me, oh, about a week ago. It was a request for my services on the night of the awards ceremony. We met at a certain bar to discuss and finalise a few matters. That is what occurred. I trust my memory, and I believe I have made no mistakes. Hmm, so you physically met your client, huh? That is correct. Meeting one's client is the first step to building trust, in my opinion. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Request taking. Okay, I believe we just need to press here a bit to unravel the contradictions. I think this one? So you physically met Adrian Andrews, right? Of course I did. What was that? What was with the brief pause? Witness, I would like for you to give us a few more details. I always treat my clients as a matter of principle. I have never taken a request by telephone or mail. What about online? Like, you know that's a thing, right? <laughs> and why is that? That's because I value the trust between a client and myself above all else. And the only way to establish that is to speak to the client while looking them in the eye. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, does the testimony just now have any importance? Yes. Of course it was very important, Your Honor. If Mr. DeKilla had met his client before the murder, then it's unlikely he is mistaken. Hmm. 
So you're saying that his client really was Adrian Andrews? Um, I guess so. You see, it's just as I, it is just as I said. <laughs> I'm so lost. Who the heck am I supposed to be helping here? Calm down, Phoenix. Think carefully and relax. Now then, would the witness please continue? Okay, so that wasn't it. Uh, I was hoping you know about the few matters that needed finalizing. So your client was Adrian Andrews. That is correct. Well, he says the two of them met. But if they did, then there shouldn't be anything wrong with the killer's testimony. Well, it doesn't seem to be anything strange this time around. You have to draw more information from him, but you can't draw his suspicion. If you can do that, you should be able to find a flaw in his testimony somewhere. Talk about a delicate balance. One week ago? Are you sure? Yes, I am quite sure. I, of course, had my own preparations, and I was barely able to finish. When you request my services, Mr. Attorney, I hope you will keep that in mind. Please, stop. In any case, my client this time had a very specific date and time in mind. A specific date and time? Did you ask why on that specific night? No. I try to fulfill all the conditions of my client's request. But as for why, I only have my suspicions. Your suspicions, huh? So, what are these suspicions you had? Why did your client request that night? I'm sure it was all for the bear. The bear? My client spoke of it. I'm sure there will be a bear-shaped figurine in Juan Corridor's room. I would like you to retrieve that item for me. You must be talking about this bear puzzle. Inside that figurine was a suicide note. Naturally, the victim brought it with him to his hotel room. He was planning to publicly disclose its contents at the press conference, after all. That is correct. And I, if I had not done the job that night, I would not have known where that bear figurine was. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, was testimony just now of any importance? Testimony just now has made one thing clear, and that is... The client knew the secret of the bear figurine. Huh? Why is everyone so quiet? Mr. Wright, I think all of us already knew that. Uh, oh, really? Witness, please continue with your testimony. Uh, I pressed that one already. So your client was Adrian Andrews. That is correct. Well, he says the two of them met. But if they did, then there shouldn't be anything wrong with the killer's testimony. Um, I can't remember what to do here. <laughs> Let me see. I know it's got something to do with the fact that... Something to do with the bear, but I can't remember. I know Sil I, I know um, Adrian said she would burn the, the note, and the fact that it still exists suggests that she didn't get it. But I can't see a piece of testimony actually talking about it. Maybe I press this one again? Uh, yeah, I've looked at this already. Oh wait, I, rem I remember what it is. You have to do that again. Um... Sorry. <laughs> I'll just fast forward it. See, we're saying some more details about the client, but then Dekil is talking about other things, right? He's talking about trust between himself and clients in general, but that's not what we asked about. Why he meets his clients is not important, and that wasn't the point. Witness, please stop sidestepping my questions. What do you mean by that? My question was, did you really meet Adrian Andrews in person? I have already told you, Mr. Wright, I did. It was only through talking with him face to face that I began to trust him. That's when I thought, I can trust this person as a client. Hmm, it's true what they say about talking face to face. Well, Mr. Wright, is the testimony just now of any importance? It was very important. If I heard what I think I heard just now, then I think I've got him. Your Honor, 
I believe the test to me just now was of the utmost importance. Huh? Really? If that's the case, witness, please include the statement just now in your testimony. Very well. From the moment I saw him, I thought, I can trust this person as a client. Uh-oh. <laughs> so yeah, the contradiction is that uh, De Killer is using incorrect pronouns. It could just mean that he's a douche, but it also probably means he hasn't met Miss Andrews at all. <laughs> I would like to go over this one more time. You met Adrian Andrews at a bar and took the request at that time? Yes, that is correct. And that's when you thought he was trustworthy. How many times must I repeat myself? Yes, that is correct. I'm sorry, but that is an impossible tale. W what? Shelley De Killer. You have never met the real Adrian Andrews. W why would you say that? Because you made one very big slip up. About her. So what is the issue? What did you say just now? About her? If you had ever met Adrian Andrews in person, one look would have told you that she is a woman. Oh! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, order! Order in the court! Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? This witness testified to the following, that he always meets face to face with his clients when taking their request. But he has never met Adrian Andrews in person. Yes, Your Honor, that is exactly the point. That means Mr. DeKiller's client could not have been Miss Adrian Andrews. Gross. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, I understand your logic on this one. However, why would the assassin make such a basic mistake? I believe it has to do with her name, Your Honor. Her name? Yes, Adrian Andrews is, without a doubt, a very androgynous name. Hmm, yes I see. Unluckily for Mr. DeKiller, the entire time he was on the stand, no one had stated Adrian Andrews' gender. Very, like, cheesily and obnoxiously. <laughs> and so he simply picked the wrong gender to go with. Well, there's a lot of them to work with, so you know. Fair enough. <laughs> what? What is going on? Shall I DeKiller? This court demands an explanation. Um... Uh, I think somehow I must have mixed up this client with another. So does that mean you remember something different now? Yes, of course. Please, if you would allow me to testify once more. Ugh, I know he's just going to spit out more lies. Very well, but this time please give the truth, us the truth, and nothing but the truth. Request taking, part two. Yes, now I remember. I took that request by mail. There have been times when I took a job without having met my client. The request was for the murder of Juan Corridor and two or three other small things. When I saw the name at the end of the letter, I thought my client to be a man. Gross. <laughs> hmm. So you took this job through a letter. He didn't mention anything about a letter in his earlier testimony. Which means he is definitely lying. Be careful, Phoenix. If you break the assassin's testimony completely, it's over for us. I know, I can't make him suspicious, but I think we're okay. Like, we can do this. As long as he's standing there across from me, no matter how strong of a punch I throw, he'll counter it. Yeah, the, the ship between Phoenix and Edgeworth is very popular. <laughs> now then, let's begin the cross-examination. And it's beautiful. Request taken, part two. Okay, so we want to know about these two or three other things, right? Those are important. Two or three other things? Yes. And what were these other things? A few other things that have nothing to do with this case. Hmm. What should I do? Should I let him slide with that? It'd be really bad if I pushed his buttons the wrong way and he got mad. Whether or not they're related to this case is for the court to decide. Mr. Attorney. Y yes Everything I've said from the beginning has been nothing but beneficial to your client. 
Which is why I wonder what is pushing you to continue with this cross-examination. Could it be... That you are planning to betray your own client? That's... I smell the stench of a backstabber. And should you turn out to be one... Wait. Uh-oh. This is looking really bad. I shouldn't press my luck. Alright, I have to think. Is this worth pursuing? Yeah, th these things are important. Witness, this is a very important matter. Please cooperate and tell us what these other jobs your client requested were. If it's truly that important, I suppose I don't have much of a choice. The bear figurine. The bear figurine? After the assassination of the target, I was to find that figurine. I was told that this job was just as important as the actual killing. And... where was that figurine? It was inside Mr. Corridor's suitcase. And then... what did you do next? I handed it over to my client right away. You gave it to your client? Interesting. Hmm, this information certainly sounds important to me. Witness, please include what you just stated in your testimony. As you wish. One of these was to find the bear figurine and to give it to Adrian Andrews. Okay, so here's the problem. If the figurine had really been given to Adrian, she would have destroyed it because, you know, she wanted to burn the suicide note. She would have burned the figurine. And the figurine still exists. Uh, I th think you can just present the bear itself, but you might need to present the suicide note. So I'm gonna throw down another quick save just in case. The save system is way better in this version of the game. Cool. Shelly DeKiller. If you had really given the bear to Miss Andrews, then this item should not have been inside it. This item? I see where you're going. Yup, that's where I'm going. Where is everyone going? Do I need to pack a suitcase? Your Honor, please think back to Miss Andrews' testimony. And I was going to burn it, for her sake. If even for a single minute, this bear had actually been in Miss Andrews' hands, I'm sure she would have taken the suicide note out and burned it. Order, order, order! So that's where you two were going. So by the very fact that this suicide note was still inside the bear, it tells us that your client didn't know how to disassemble the puzzle. W which means? It means, Your Honor, that it is impossible for Adrian Andrews to be the client. Oh ho! Order! 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 Ugh, Mr. Phoenix Rise. I... I'm sure I mentioned this before. How I hate traitors above all else. I think your cross-examination has clearly demonstrated something to me. You... you must wish to break your end of our agreement. No, that's not... That's enough. If that is your intention, there's only one thing for me to do. W wait, please. Gentlemen, ladies, please excuse me. I have a matter that I must attend to. N no please not that please wait. Mr. Attorney, bring this trial to a speedy end and I may stay my hand. Otherwise... <sighs> what in the... Mr. Wright, are you... Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor. I didn't understand this witness's outburst just now. Do you think there is a need to hear more testimony, or is this enough? Well, we should... Edgeworth, we can't do this. If we keep this up... Maya, she'll... Uh, mm. Prosecution. I... What has come over everyone? Even you are... The prosecution... rests. What is going on around here? The prosecution has no further questions, Your Honor. What? Well, I never thought I'd see the day. This is a most unusual situation. 
if the prosecution rests with no further questions, then the prosecution has failed to uphold its stance. If that is the case, then even though I am reluctant, I must believe that Mr. DeKiller's testimony is accurate. That would mean that Shelley DeKiller's client is... Adrian Andrews. Mm. Mr. Wright. Y yes, Your Honor. If I end the trial here, right now, then your client, Matt Ongard, would be declared innocent. In his place, Adrian Andrews would be charged with murder. M Miss Andrews would be charged with murder. The prosecution has no further questions, so we will now hear the defense's final remarks. Bailiff, please bring the defendant, Matt Ongard, to the stand. The items from the killer's hideout didn't make it in time. We tried as hard as we could, but it looks like our time has run out. I can't believe it. The outcome now lies in your hands. Dude, did the old guy finally decide? To be honest, I can't think of you as a truly innocent and good person. You have done enough evil to drive a woman to suicide. I mean, that note was fake. Like, it's possible he didn't really do the things that were written in the note. I'm pretty sure he did, but that note is, is fake, so, you know, it's possible he didn't. But, at least on the charge of murder, it would appear you were innocent. Huh. Um. So, I guess even the old fuddy-duddy figured me out. M Mr. Ongard? What an atrocious lawyer I have, giving his own client up like this? And that refreshing like a spring breeze crap? It's just atrocious, don't you agree? What, why are you revealing your true self in court in front of everyone? I thought your image was important. Dude. <laughs> anyway, get on with it and pronounce me innocent already. Right, Mr. Lawyer? Should I side with justice? Or should I save Maya's life? You better get on guard a guilty sentence, okay? But... But if I did that... Maya will die. But if I say he's innocent... Then Miss Andrews will be charged as the murderer. Do I say he is guilty? Or not guilty? Either choice I make, someone's life is going to end. It all hinges on what I choose. Now then, Mr. Wright. Let's hear the defense's final statements on this matter. If the person who hired the assassin was Adrian Andrews, then your client, Mr. Matt Ongard, is innocent. Hmm. There's no need to ask old- there's no need to ask old man. After all, my lawyer is going to say what I want, aren't you? Right. I can't- I can't do this. But I have to decide something. I can't count on the evidence to help me anymore. I have to listen to my heart. So yeah, you, you can't look at the court record when he says that. It actually disables that option. My client, Matt Ongard, is... Okay, it looks like you're actually making a real decision here. You're not. Regardless of what you pick, it will continue with what happens next. So I don't have to show you both options. I will just show you this one. We are waiting for your answer, Mr. Wright. Matt Ongard, your client, deserves an answer. Maya, I'm sorry. Matt Ongard is... Objection! Franziska von Karma! What are you doing here? You see now, don't you, Mr. Phoenix Wright? This is exactly why you should never take your eyes off of that scruffy fool. Did you bring them? The final pieces? Do you have them? You should know better than to ask that, Mr. Miles Edgebert. A Von Kammer is perfect in every way. The evidence is here in perfect condition. Don't worry about Scruffy. He's fine, and his injuries are minor. All of the items are inside this. Filthful coat this is. That's gumshoes. I can spot his tattered rags anywhere. I apologize for its ugliness, but there was nothing else to wrap the items in. I 
fought long and hard this whole trial, all for what is inside that raggedy coat. I'm sure that inside that coat lies a crucial piece of evidence. Your Honor, inside that filthy coat are the defense's final pieces of evidence. The final evidence? This trial is already over. All that remains is for me to hand down my verdict. I do not believe that any evidence presented now would change the outcome of this trial. What? Objection! Your Honor, it is our duty to examine every piece of evidence down to the last. I request that Miss Von Karma be allowed to present these pieces of evidence. Hmm. I suppose you were right, Mr. Edgeworth. I grant permission to do so. However, this one obvious rule applies here. If these items do not bring up any new points, then they will not be accepted by this court. Now, Miss Von Karma, if you please. These pieces of evidence are items left by the killer during his escape from the police. Hmm, you must have been quite a rush. Yes, Your Honor, the killer left three pieces of evidence. Somewhere among the evidence we're about to see, there will be something that will turn this whole situation around, like a miracle. I'm sure of it. That is all we can hope for. The first item is a, pi is a pistol. Does Tequila's pistol have anything to do with this case? Uh, not really. He didn't fire it during the case. I'm pretty sure there was no gun involved in this case. There's no real benefit to hearing about it. Please present the next piece of evidence. Pistol added to the court record. The second piece of evidence is this videotape. I bet the killer took that from On Guard Mansion. We do want to know more about this. Have you checked the contents of that tape? Unfortunately, there was no time to. Oh yeah. But I would speculate that this tape is very important. Why would you say that? Because he came back to his hideout for it. The, the killer went back for it? That's right. It looks like he was trying to recover it. He injured three of the officers at the site. Hmm. But somehow, it looks like they managed to protect it from DeKiller. Shelley DeKiller is no ordinary man. Videotape added to the court record. The last piece of evidence is this bellboy's uniform. Is that a uniform from the Gatewater Hotel? We will hear more about this one, because it might be important. Was that used during the crime? I'm almost certain it was. There's even a pair of black leather gloves in one of the pockets. There's no doubt about it, the killer was wearing this on the night of the murder. There is one thing I find interesting about this uniform. And what is that? There is a button missing on this uniform. A button? It's a very unique button. I'm sure if we ver we ver to recover it, it would provide us with an interesting clue. Hmm. Bobo's uniform went into the court record. That is all I have to present, Your Honor. Hmm. It's just as I thought. And what is that, Your Honor? I'm sure, were we under normal circumstances, these items from Shelley DeKiller's hideout would be very important clues. However, our question is not who did the killing. It is who is the client. Yes, that is correct. And these three items do not tell us anything about that. Thank you for your hard work, Ms. Von Karma. You may step down now. Wait, Your Honor. Please allow me to examine this new evidence. Overall, this court already has all the evidence it needs to hand down a verdict. Wonderful. Absolutely splendid. This judge is such a brilliant man, isn't he? Is this the end? Phoenix. Oh, I knew it. There's no such thing as a miracle in this world, is there? I think you're wrong. I think they do exist. But you have to make that miracle happen. You've come this far. You can't give up now. But, but, no matter how you think about it, it's, it's... Try, for my sake, just think about it for a second. There are two ways out of the situation for us. Two? The first. Make Ongar wish from the bottom of his soul for a guilty verdict. Huh? The killer will always place his client's wishes first. If Ongard himself wishes to be convicted, then he will let his then he will let his hostage go. Th that may be true, but 
That's asking me to do the impossible. Second way. Forced to kill her to end his contract with Ongard. If the killer were to no longer think of Ongard as his client, then he would let Maya go. Me, that's even more impossible. He is a man who values his duty towards his clients above all else. I know both of these seem like impossible feats at first, but if you could make either one happen, it would truly be a miracle. The bigger problem is, the judge has already said he doesn't need any more evidence. Pieces he was just shown, he's not accepting them. Phoenix, think things through from the other side. Isn't that what has always worked for us? The other side? Wait, does she mean... You mean... To turn things around? Phoenix, the judge says he doesn't need the evidence. If that's the case, then who does need it? The person who needs the evidence. The defence, prosecution and the judge, we have seen all the pieces of evidence. And that is how we have come to know the truth. But there is one person who has yet to see them all. And that person does not know the truth. That truth, it may be what will bring about the miracle in the end. There are no objections this time, correct? Now then, I'll pronounce my verdict. Why don't we all respectfully sit back and listen, kids? Objection! I have already told you, Mr. Mr. Wright, this court does not need any more evidence. I am not saying it is us that needs the evidence, Your Honor. Then, you want to show the evidence to... that person? Yes, Your Honor. Please, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, you to ask with such passion. I will grant you one chance. W one chance? Please show your evidence to who you think is the right person. Objection! That's impossible, to turn the situation around in one try. One try. That is all I will That is all I will permit. I have to try to remember. Everything that has happened up to this point. Think, Phoenix. Think. There must be a way to save Maya while taking the Oggard down at the same time. Now then, Mr. Wright. Let's not waste any more time. Okay, um, I need to throw down a save here. I think this is the right spot for it. Who would you like to show evidence to? Yeah, because you can't save on this screen. Um, basically there are two endings to this case. There's an ending, if you get this wrong, uh, a bad ending, and there's a good ending if you get this right. Um, I know exactly what to do, but I'm gonna do it wrong first so you can see what happens. Uh, I'm gonna show some evidence to, uh, Celeste. Basically, if you pick any wrong person or any wrong piece of evidence, you get the same wrong ending. I see. And now, tell this court what one piece of evidence you would like to show this person. Uh, the uniform. Well, what do you think, Mr. Edgeworth? Um, uh, um, I don't have anything to say to this. Hmm, how about you, Ms. Von Karma? Well, I was just shot, so... I'm afraid I cannot allow the defense to continue. What? No one understands what you were talking about anymore. Wait, please, one more chance. That is enough, Mr. Wright. I will now state my verdict. This court finds the defendant, Matt Ongard. That is all. This court is adjourned. And just like that, the case came to an end. I ran away from the courtroom and wandered the streets alone. I never saw Maya again. The killer is a man of his word, so I'm sure he released her as promised. I heard the verdict of Miss Andrew's trial a few days later. She was found guilty, of course. The miracle never happened. Maybe it was never meant to. Because a miracle is something that doesn't exist. The End So yeah, that's the bad ending. 
It's more or less just a game over, but, you know, you can call it a bad ending if you want. <laughs> it does say the end. So the correct thing to do, uh, these, out of these three pieces of evidence, that's useless, that's useless, this is important. It's a videotape, which is kind of weird given this was set in like 2000, like 20, I think it's set in 2019. No one was using videotape anymore. Anyway, this tape is important. Because as you might recall, the signal from On Guard's camera was being received at the mansion and was being recorded onto something, which probably is this tape. Therefore, this should have footage of the murder, which was recorded by On Guard. I see. And now, tell this court what one piece of evidence you would like to show this person. Oops, I got it backwards. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, let me just quit back to the menu. It'll let me. It won't let me. It won't let me save. Or go to the menu or anything. Uh. Uh, what? I must have pressed something that accidentally put it into that mode. I don't know. Weird. Okay, um. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't let you save anywhere here. Ending again. Ending, ending. So yeah, you can accidentally present them in the wrong order because it lets you pick either profiles or people in this game. Which is annoying. Anyway, the end. Let's try that one more time and do it correctly. So yeah, I explained already, the videotape is what we need to present. I don't know why they're using videotape in 2019, but the point is that has the murder recorded on it. It has footage of the killer doing a murder. And it was recorded by Matt Ongarda's insurance, right? So that he could blackmail the killer. So we need to show the evidence to Shelly the killer. And we want to show him the tape. Because basically the problem is Matt does not trust the killer at all. And as Shelly explained, trust is really important to him. Well, what do you think, Mr. Edgeworth? Uh, um... I think there is some merit in showing this evidence to that witness. Bailiff, please bring in the transceiver from earlier. Alright, looks like I managed to convince him. Maya, she's okay, right? Didn't I tell you to concern yourself with bringing about a speedy end to this trial? Now, if I understand correctly, you wish to show me one piece of evidence? Yes, one is all I need. I have here a videotape. It was found at your hideout. I heard you injured three officers in your attempt to get this back. That was most regrettable. However, it was an order from my client. I was told to protect that videotape. I thought so. I'm afraid I seem to have failed in that regard. Do you know the contents of this tape? I was sternly told by my client to not watch it, so I have absolutely no idea. Actually, you are, you are on this tape. Me? There was a video camera hidden at the crime scene. Your actions were being recorded. What? Is that true, Mr. Wright? Who... Who was it that planted a camera? Well, the only person who could have placed a camera at the scene of the crime would be your client, naturally. That was Adrian Andrews? Be quiet and listen, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Your client specified a place and time for you, isn't that right? Y yes That was so they could film you. I had no idea. Mr. Wright, why would my client do such a thing? I would like to know why. Why did Matt Ongard film the crime scene? The reason why he did that is my ticket out of this whole mess. There was only one reason why your client would secretly film the crime scene. They wanted blackmail on you. Your client once told me something very interesting. 
We were talking about you, and this is what they said. But I'm no weakling. <laughs> I don't believe anyone, least of all assassins. Oh, come now, Mr. Wright. Assassins aren't above blackmail. Yes, that's where the video comes in. With that, I can keep him at bay, even blackmail him if I want. Your client didn't trust you at all. They were thinking of using this video to blackmail you. What do you have to say to that, Shelly the Killer? Oh ho ho! It looks like... It looks like I was being deceived from the very beginning. Yes, by a natural. That is the kind of person they are. Your client is a person who only thinks and plots of how to use the people around them. To protect themselves from any and all dangers that may arise. That is the true nature of your client. I have one question for the witness. Yes? You told us one thing numerous times in your testimony. You said that you detest traitors most of all. Yes, that's right. But what if that traitor was your own client? What would you do then? That's obvious. I would break our contract in that case. And then, that client would become my next target. For the honour of the D-Killer name, even if it takes an eternity, I would follow that person to the ends of the earth to exact my punishment. I see. That's all I wanted to know. So the traitor becomes the killer's next target. Ah, uh, I get it. This is how we'll turn this case around. Mr. Wright. Yes? My contract with my client is over as of now. I seem to have a new job on my hands. I will now return to you your precious item. What the? I'm not an item? Beep. Maya. I thought I'd never see you again. Oh, thank goodness. Um, this trial appears to have come to its conclusion. However, I... Actually, I'm sort of... I don't quite know what just happened there with the client and the witness and... Miss Von Karma, where did that... She always has you in her sights. Now, I do believe it's time to finally hand down a verdict. Mr. Ongard, it looks like somehow you got what you wanted. You will finally receive the acquittal you wanted so badly, you should be happy. But before that, I would like to make one final statement. Sometime in the near future, one very betrayed assassin may appear before you. Needless to say, that man is very good at what he does. I'm sure you would understand what I mean if you watch this video. Help me. Now then, Your Honor, the verdict, if you please. Is this alright with you, Mr. Wright? We have finally reached the end of a very long battle. Whether he's convicted or acquitted, there is no escape for him now. Go on, Phoenix. Flee whichever way your heart tells you. Right, Chief. I believe regardless of what you pick, he, he pleads for guilty himself, because then he's safe from the killer in police custody. Mad on guard. Even though I am a lawyer, I cannot make your crime disappear. I think a guilty verdict is appropriate here. M me My wonderful self? G guilty? Even if you got an acquittal, the instant you set foot outside the detention centre, your life would be in danger. No matter which way you look, you look at it, you can't run away from your crime anymore. Ah. Guilty, 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 guilty. <laughs> yeah, he just pleads guilty and scratches his face up. Gross. 
As always, it looks like we have uncovered the real truth. Wait, I don't remember you helping out much in this. Mr. Edgeworth, how is Madame Guard? I have left Miss Von Karma in charge of inca his incarceration. I'm sure he's getting a full course meal of whip leather right about now. Very good. That was a close one, wasn't it, witness? Yes. I plan to pay my debt to society for my own crime, Your Honor. The first time I was called to the witness stand during this trial, all I felt was despair. She must be talking about the time Edgeworth really went after her. I guess she's trying to forgive him for what he did. This witness, how should I put this? She has an illness. If you're going to say you would choose death, that is of no concern to me. Edgeworth is a dick. <laughs> but after that, when I was alone at the detention center, that's the first time I really saw myself for who I am. And today, when the two of you used your combined strength to convict Matt, I, I felt like I'd finally been saved. Wow, that's the first time I've ever seen her smile. I'm really happy that you two were in charge of this case. I really don't know how to express how I feel at this moment. This is... This is the first time I felt comfortable with myself, with who I am. Thank you so much, everyone. She's, she's so gay. She, she is a lesbian, and I love her. Oh, sweetie. Love you so much, Adrian. Looks like we've resolved everything at last. As for myself, there are still a few things I'm confused about. But everyone seems to be in good spirits, and that is good enough for me. That is all. This court is adjourned. Did he actually do a verdict? Like, he didn't declare a verdict. <laughs> March 23rd, 5.14pm. Like, we know it would be guilty, but he didn't actually declare it. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 3. You were great out there, Phoenix. What I did out there was right, wasn't it? This is the first time you've not gotten your client off. You got them a guilty verdict this time. But you have to look past all of that to what's really important. You now realise that there is something more than just getting a not guilty, right? Yes, I understand now. Phoenix, think back for a second. Think to the moments before Ms. Von Karma arrived with the final pieces of evidence. She's not moving her mouth, how is she talking to me? Think about the incredible decision you had to make. Now then, Mr. Wright, let's hear the defense's final statements on this matter. I can't count on the evidence to help me anymore. I have to listen to my heart. Should I side with justice? Or should I save Maya's life? My client, Matt on guard is... Is he guilty, or is he not guilty? Those were your choices then, and your answer. Your answer spoke to what being a lawyer means to you. Right. E Edgeworth? I have good news. Maya is now safe in police custody. Okay. Is she safe, or is she in police custody? Make up your mind, one or the other. Really? Pearls, you're telling us the truth, right, Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, she's quite safe. She is on her way here as we speak in a patrol car. Ah, Mystic Maya, Mystic Maya's safe! You did it, you really did it, Mr. Nick! Ow! She punches deceptively hard for a kid. I... I believed in you. I kept saying to myself, Mr. Nick will save her, Mr. Nick will save her. Uh, um, thanks. Oh! What's wrong? Ms. Von Karma. Um, about earlier. Uh, thanks. Ow! Why are you still smiling? Mr. Phoenix of right? You, you lost. Your perfect bin record has now been crushed. And yet, you are still happy? I don't think you'll ever understand, Ms. Von Karma. How dare you? Don't worry. She may in time. After all, I was like that myself until a year ago. Edgeworth? For my own personal victories, and for guilty verdicts. I used every dirty trick in the book, and so my win record remains spotless. But, 
A man appeared and stood fast against that selfish me. I fought him in my usual manner and tasted my first defeat. I felt like I had lost everything because of that. And then... It was my turn to sit in the defendant's chair. And I was saved by that person I called my enemy. I couldn't forgive myself for all that had happened, so I left the prosecutor's office. And I left that note, Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth chooses death. Hmm, as Vel you should have. A prosecutor who has shamed himself with defeat should crawl into a hole and die. But that was not what happened. After I left the prosecutor's office, I finally came to realise something. And it was in that moment of clarity that everything began to change. What? What foolish nonsense. We prosecutors use anything we can to attack the defendant, but every time we did so, no matter how desperate the situation, instead of giving up like most people, that man would hold strong with his undying faith. And then, before I knew it, I began to trust in that man as well. Oh, What? You trusted your enemy? It doesn't matter how many underhanded tricks a person uses, the truth will always find a way to make itself known. The only thing we can do is to fight with the knowledge we hold and everything we have. Erasing the paradoxes one by one. It's never easy, we claw and scratch for every inch. But we will always eventually reach that one single truth. This I promise you. The truth. Yes, that's the reason why prosecutors and defense attorneys exist. But I'm sure you knew that already, didn't you, right? That's why you couldn't forgive me, this man who went into hiding. Isn't that right? This man who only had his sights set on victory, who ran away into the night. Ah, is, is Mr. Edgeworth right, Mr. Nick? You really let me down. When you disappeared, I felt betrayed. The reason I decided to become a lawyer to begin with was because I believed in the things you said to me all those years ago. And you... you betrayed your own words. That's why, one year ago, I made up my mind. I decided that the Miles Edgeworth that I knew had died. At least, that's what I told myself. You pathetic fool. M Ms. Von Karma? I don't want to hear the wretched whimpering of a disgraced loser. A Von Karma is someone who is destined to be perfect. Miles Edgeworth, you are no longer worthy. You are no longer worthy of being a Von Karma. And neither am I. It's over. It's all over. And Ziska threw something on the ground just now. This is an electromagnetic receiver. Isn't that the thing she used to track Detective Gumshoe? I'll return this to the precinct later. There's something else. Ah, isn't that Ms. Von Karma's whip? I'll never set foot in another courtroom again. I'm sure that's what she's saying by, by this action. You should keep this, right? Um, okay. Nick! M M Maya! Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya! <laughs> oh Nick, I knew you would come through. You got on guard convicted like I knew you would. And on top of that, you even rescued me. Well, of course I did. No, I would never desert you. But we sure pressed our luck this trial. You're really lucky to be standing here. Whatever, whatever. Look, it's over, okay? Besides, if I did croak, I would just come back and haunt you like a bad ghost through Pearly. Is it really that easy to do something like that? Thanks a lot, Nick. Um, don't mention it. Maya. Oh, Mr. Edgeworth. Um, I'm relieved you're alright. 
Hey, it looks like you've made some real progress, Mr. Edgeworth. Um, well, I suppose I'm a little different from who I was a year ago. <laughs> Alright. I think it's time we got out of this depressing place. Huh? Where are we going? Food, Nick, food! Crab, chow, I'm starved! I'm so hungry even you look like a nice juicy burger on a bun to me, Nick. You think I look like a burger? I'm a prime rib at least. Come with us, Mr. Edgeworth, please. Uh, um, if you insist. Alright, so, alright, so how about we hit up our usual burger joint? That'd be silly, Nick. Huh? This case messed up that awesome evening and got in the way of my gourmet food. So I've decided we have to make it up by having another, another feast. Uh, another feast? Come on, Nick. Food! <laughs> March 23rd, 7.38pm, Gatewater Hotel, Hotel Lobby. Hey pal, sorry to keep you guys waiting. Gumshoe, are you alright? Yeah, but I'm really embarrassed. I didn't think I would need a telephone pole of all things. A telephone pole? Then it wasn't a red light that got him? You did it again, city boy. I felt like my dear old heart was going to give out on me, and I ain't joking. Yeah, I was more excited than the very last episode of The Steel Samurai. Oh, it was more exciting, sorry. So, thanks. Now looky here, Mr. Snooty Prosecutor. Don't you reckon you bullied Mr. Rat too hard? If you don't start being a lot nicer to him, he might just kick it. Tonight, even. Uh, I'll keep that in mind. Well, come on now. Everyone gather around. Y'all are gonna get your picture taken by a genuine professional photographer. Looks like Lotta bought herself a new camera. Well, pal, at least we can put this messy case behind us now. Come on, tonight's all about eating, so let's go chow down, pal. Amen to that, pal. Amen. You know, when you think about it, you were the one who saved the day, Detective. Huh? Me? You really think so? He's right. If it wasn't for the three items you took, I think this trial would have had a very different ending. Oh, well, you know, it's... Oh, 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 oh. Huh? Wait. That's odd. When I ran off with the things from the to Killer's hideout, I was sure I took four things in total, sir. What? Four? Yeah, I'm sure I put one of the items in my coat pocket? There was a fourth item? Aw, oh, come on, y'all, it's over. But, oh boy, I tell ya, you really are something else. Between getting accused of murder and getting kidnapped? Never a dull moment with you, huh? <laughs> you think? Why does she look so happy about that? But being shut away for two whole days. Weren't you scared? Yeah, it was really scary. Oh, I felt so hopeless. So to keep my mind off things, I drew a picture. Sounds like you had it rough, gal. So, where's this picture of yours? Yeah, yeah, I wanna see it. I wanna see Mystic Maya's picture. Hmm. You know, I don't know where it went. Oh, that's too bad. We're gonna see it in a little bit, I promise. Well, it's alright. It wasn't anything important anyway. Ah. Oh. It sure is nice to finally see them both smiling again. Beep beep. Beep beep. Beep, beep. Hmm? What is it, Edgeworth? This thing is picking something up. Ah, that's... that's Miss Von Karma's receiver. Ugh, thanks to her, I had the most awful experience of my life, sir. I can't believe she stuck a tracking device on me. That's odd. Even though you're standing right here, the tracking device seems to be in a different location. Oh, it's probably busted or something, sir. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm afraid it's about time for me to excuse myself. I still have some work to do. Huh? But Mr. Edgeworth, you haven't even eaten anything yet. And you've eaten way too much, you glutton. Phoenix, shut up. She hasn't eaten for two days. Jesus Christ. I had fun tonight. Now, if you'll excuse me. Wait. What? I just want to say... Thanks, Edgeworth. You really saved, saved me out there. Hmm. 
if anyone should be saying thanks, it should be me, right? I feel like words alone aren't enough here. I wonder if there's anything I can give him to express how I feel. Yeah, we give him the kip. The, the, the whip, not kip. What's this? Thank you. It's all thanks to you two. You and her. You don't need to thank me. I was only doing my job. It looks like Mr. Edgeworth has left, Mr. Nick. Hey, Mystic Meyer. Hmm? Yes, Pearly? I guess you two can go back to being lovey-dovey, right? You and Mr. Nick, I mean. Pearly, would you cut it out already? You're embarrassing me. Um, anyway. So, who's paying for this lovely dinner party? As if you need to ask. Everyone say, thank you to Nick. Huh? Oh yeah, I'm kinda at the point where I can't even buy instant noodles, pal. So I kinda already put your name on the bill. Huh? Huh? Yeah, I got me a situation just like that myself. There's this camera shop in this hotel, see? And I just bought myself this good old beauty here. It had better be anyhow for $3,000. Huh? 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 Yeah, actually, I reckon ya bought it for me since it's on your tab and all. Huh? 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 Isn't this great, Mr. Nick? Yeah, Nick? Why do I suddenly feel like screaming? Oh, you don't need to hold back now, you hear? Yeah, pal. Time to let it all out. This is gonna be the first time I hear the real you. Go on, it's been a while since I heard you say it. I've been busy being a hostage and all. Alright then. If you say so. And credits! <sighs> Is this gonna be a long video again? You really came through, through for me, Nick. I had to hide that letter, but I knew you'd find it. I really feel like I've been living on the edge lately. I mean, I've escaped death three times now. Pretty cool, huh? I feel like a pro. Oh, yeah, three times. Yeah. <laughs> I think about that for a second. I'm so happy that you could save Mystic Maya, Mr. Nick. I'm so happy for the two of you. Speaking of which, I think this hotel is a popular place for honeymooners. So I sort of made reservations for the two of you, just in case. Oh, Pearly. Both gay. <laughs> She's too little to understand that just yet. <laughs> now nah, she'll get it. She doesn't know. Well, pal, it looks like I'm back on the force again. Mr. Edgeworth had a long talk with the Chief, and he got me reinstated for my sake. I heard he said things like, Letting that one go is bad for all of society. Mm. I knew it! Crashing headlong into everything is the only way to live, pal! Oh my god. Character got fixed by Seiko Takeda, and she gave you a window, ooh. I, Maggie Bird, am retiring this uniform as of today, sir. I'm gonna be a waitress from now on. And bring smiles and joy to the people who come by the restaurant, sir. I hope you'll stop by sometime, Mr. Wright. I'm so glad she's quitting the force, I love her. And now she'll have a real job. Masashi Saito and Ko Koji Nakano. Nakano? Hmm, yes. Are you here to visit a patient? Hmm, I'm the director Hottie, ho ho. Recently, hmm, yes. That girl, you know, I haven't seen her around, hmm, yes. But I remember, if I even laid so much as an eye on her, it would go crack, hmm. It didn't matter if I got whipped though, hmm, hmm, yes, ho ho. Ho ho. God, I hate him. <laughs> uh, Tadaki Yamamoto. It's time to begin our quest of World Circus Domination, sweetie! And let the world know we are serious, I plan to make a fabulous flight to Zimbabwe! Hey Max, what do you think Zimbabwe is like? Do you think there are castles made of cake and bunnies who can talk? I think if there are any talking bunnies, even they won't laugh at Mo's jokes. Rude. I like Mo's jokes. Some of it anyway. Hideki Yutomi and Kaz Kazuki Sonoyama. 
I'm ready, I'm ready, there's no way these jokes are gonna fall on deaf ears. I'm gonna be more contemporary with my humor. Mo Carl, represent We got a new actor worked out. Prepare for the alley chorus. Say something, will ya? You're supposed to start this off. Get on with it. I'm glad they aren't there for very long. They share a scene. Akemi Kimura. Nice. Well done, Akemi. Or Kimura-san, I guess. What's this? Drat, it's just an ordinary electric razor recharging on its stand. I can't believe this. Really? How long do they plan on making me do this? Oh, but it's Ejifu's idea, so that means it must have a deep hidden meaning. But why well, do I get the feeling they wouldn't forget about me, would they? Oh, I was never like this in the old days. Everyone thought the world of me. They used to call me Queen Wendy and talk about loyalty. Anyone who hasn't heard about this is gonna feel the pain in my heel. Yes, I'm gonna feel the burn. Speaking of burn, playing with fire is very dangerous. Where's that? Say the worst of us. For the scenery, we burned right down. There was a huge thing that. <gasps> <laughs> Special thanks to Katsumi Maranaga and Hiroyuki Kudo. Kurumiki Suikana and y Yukari Su Suabe. I appreciate everything you and Mr. Edgeworth did for me from the bottom of my heart. Oh, that's right. I received a letter from Ms. Von Karma. She said that after I get out, I should feel free to consult her about anything at all. I'm really thankful that I've met everyone. I love you, Adrian. I love you so much. Atsushi at Inaba. I Inaba? Inaba? Inaba, I think it's right. It has become difficult for me in this country as of late. As such, I will take a short leave of absence. If you would like to request my services, please be sure to visit my homepage. May we both be blessed with longevity. Well, he has a website now, so that's cool. Shinji Mikami? Executive producer? And the after credits scene, here we go. March 23rd, 9.42pm, International Departures, Gate 12. Where are you going, Franziska? How did you know I was here? With this. That's... I heard you were planning, planting things on a certain person. Things like tracking devices in his coat, for example. Hmm. That's just like you. I only planted it there because he was always bearing it. This filthy drab coat of his. I don't know how it ended up in my luggage. But it's going in the trash, I promise you that. Oh, that's right. Speaking of that man. He told me something very interesting. When I ran off with the things from Dick Hiller's hideout, I was sure I took four things in total, sir. Four things. It seems he put the last one in his coat pocket. He put it in here? It doesn't matter anymore. The case is already over. What are you going to do now? That's none of your business. Are you running away? Shut up. You don't understand a thing. You can't possibly understand what it means to be Manfred von Karma's daughter. Franziska. So many expectations from everyone around me, expectations I must fulfill. I'm expected to bin no matter what, and failure? Such a thing is not an option for me. My father was a genius, there's no doubt about that, but, but me, I'm no genius. I've always known that. But I, I had to be one, I had to. You may not be a genius like your father, but, you are a prosecutor. You have been, you have been, and always will be. No, I'm not. Not anymore. I've even thrown my vip away. Away. Speaking of that, Wright gave me this to hold on to. Right. You knew something like this would happen, didn't you? I'm going to say this again. The prosecutors do not fight for personal honor or pride. I hope you will think deeply about what you should be striking down with that whip. You haven't changed a bit. 
You've always, you've always left me alone and walked on ahead without, without me. Miles Edge buff. I've always hated you. And then, finally my chance to take my revenge on you arrived. If I could win against that man, if I could make Phoenix Wright bow down in defeat. And this girl you left behind would have risen higher than you. That was supposed to be my revenge. I see. You know, I can't do it. I can't change who I am. I can't throw away everything I've been until today. I believe you can. Just like how Adrian Andrews did. Adrian Andrews? Andrews. Andrews. <laughs> you were going to use her during the trial, right? But you... You were dependent on your father by using his tactics, isn't that right? Hm. Today, you chased after me after I left you behind all these years. And that's why we're standing here now, side by side. But, I have no intention of stopping. If you say you were going to quit your walk down the prosecutor's path, then this is where we part ways, Francisca von Karma. I... I... I am Francisca von Karma. Don't think I'm gonna walk in your shadow forever. Our battle begins now, so you better prepare yourself, Miles Edgeworth. You're such a sweetie. I love you, Franzi. Phoenix Fright. One day, someday. I'm sure we'll meet again in battle. Until then, this last piece of evidence that never made it to you. I'll take good care of this fourth piece, so I can give it to you when at last we meet again. So the fourth piece of evidence, we're about to see it. It's really cute. you so much. So sweet. Bless you. That's the end of the game. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Next time, we're going to be moving on and playing the next game in the trilogy. Game 3, Trials and Tribulations. So, look forward to that. If you take a look here, uh, we've done that game, we've done that game. Third and final game, Trials and Tribulations in the next video. Look forward to it. Um, I do want to continue with the rest of the games in the series, but they're not on the Switch yet. Only th this trilogy is on the Switch, so if we get to Apollo Justice and it's not on the Switch yet, I might need to do something different. I believe there's like an iOS version I might be able to record, so I might do it that way. Or maybe not. I'll, I'll see what happens. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye!